The aim of trimming a model is to trim for hands-off straight and level flight at the average speed you prefer to fly at. Due to a variety of factors, it is normal to have to re-trim the airplane each day you fly, sometimes each flight. Even with a new model, a lot of trim should not be necessary as long as the surfaces are positioned close to neutral to begin with. Instances when pilots recount needing lots of trim are almost always the result of not factoring in a warp in a control surface when setting neutral. First set the throttle to a comfortable cruise speed, for example, half throttle. The number one rule of trimming is first fly the plane. To determine what trim is needed, you must try to maintain parallel lines with the runway and a consistent height. Make every effort to maintain parallel lines before taking your fingers off of the control stick and attempting to trim. As to which control to trim first, the answer is whichever seems to be keeping you busiest. Usually it is the ailerons. A trend will then develop that will reveal what trim you need. For example, consistent left aileron corrections indicates the need for left aileron trim. The amount should reflect the amount you are correcting with the aileron. Small corrections point to only needing a few beeps of trim. Large corrections will require numerous beeps, and likely two or three attempts to get the airplane fully trimmed. The next deviation after making a trim adjustment may be caused by turbulence or occurred during the time your fingers were off the stick. It is therefore critical that you return your fingers to the control stick and fly the airplane for a bit between each trim adjustment. This will help you avoid mistakenly adjusting trim for what turns out was a deviation caused by turbulence. Which fingers to use when making trim adjustments varies depending on the person. The trick is to rehearse making trim adjustments on the transmitter until it becomes natural to you. It also helps when making trim adjustments, to raise up the transmitter and glance at each trim adjustment as it's being made. If the plane is so far out of trim that you can't let go of the stick, first, keep flying the plane. Try to get more altitude, and put the plane into a climb in order to buy more time to let go and trim. This is a scenario where practicing on a flight simulator can prove invaluable. Purposefully put the airplane increasingly out of trim. Get a feel for flying it, then re-trim. Practice putting the plane out of trim both left and right. Practice also putting the plane out of trim in which it wants to dive, requiring you to continually pull up to maintain level flight. Then trim the elevator. Next, trim it to continually climb. Push the nose back to level with the control stick, then adjust the elevator trim forward. By increasingly putting the airplane out of trim in the simulator and being able to handle it, making smaller daily trim adjustments in the real world will seem far easier by comparison. Elevator trim can be a bit more difficult to set because it depends on the airspeed you're flying at. Therefore, as a rule, set the throttle to an approximate cruise speed. For example half. Maintain level flight with the elevator control. Then trim the elevator for hands-off level flight. If you feel that the plane is flying too fast, or too slow, adjust the throttle accordingly. Then re-trim the elevator for level flight at the new average airspeed. When the throttle has been reduced to set up a landing, proficient pilots simply hold in some elevator to manage the landing approach angle. However, if you were dividing up the flight into flying fast early on, and then switching to practicing several landings, it pays to re-trim the elevator to allow flying level at a slower airspeed. Lastly, if the plane requires more than several clicks of any trim, you should identify the position of the controls after the flight, return the transmitter trims to neutral, and physically adjust the plane's control surfaces for the necessary trim.